So guys, so welcome back. Last time, basically, what we did, if you haven't seen it yet, is we put a bigger turbo on this car, and if you want to go and interview that, then just go ahead and have a look at it. But basically, now, what we're doing is we're doing a few of the finishing features today on this to get the car running some healthy figures, probably around 400 or something like that. So today, pretty much what we're going to be doing is we're taking the fuel rail out, we're going to be taking that out to get it reprofiled, then after that what we're going to be doing is fit a new airflow meter on it to meet the air, fit the full the boost pipes that we didn't get around to properly doing last time. And what we're going to do as well is we're going to take the fuel rail out and get that reprofiled, then we can put all of the other stuff on, like we can put all the boost pipes on, we can put all of the, the you know new induction kit on, the new air filter on, then set everything up on the hand controller and take this thing to get mapped, which I'm really looking forward to and I hope from all of this work that we actually see some decent results out of it. I'm kind of hoping for about 400 to 450. That'd be ideal. If we don't get there, you know, it's a bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Still, like, over 350, I'll be well happy with, but something between 450 and 400 is, like, ideal to me. So, guys, what we've got to do now is take all of this stuff off just so we can get to the fuel rail and pull it out, hopefully, with the injectors. First of all, what I'm going to do is take this off. This is the AAC valve, I think, which is basically, like, the idle control valve, and then take all the vacuum pipes off for it, work our way down here, and hopefully just be able to wiggle it out of here. Here might be a bit of an issue, but it should be all right. The only issue that we're starting to have is it's starting to rain here, unfortunately. But ideally, I want to get this rail out today, so we're going to crack on with it. I'll put you in a bit of a time lapse, and we'll crack on. So now I'm going to put a bit of penetrating fluid onto the injectors to try and help them out. Don't judge you can, but it works. <laughs> Literally popped out unbelievably easy. So that's all out now, thank God. So then let's go over and get these injectors um, high flow then. So I put them in a bag just for now, you know, only the finest as the bag for life, just to stop fuel leaking everywhere. Let's go. So then guys, let's hop in the daily. I'll have to do another video on this car at some point. It's probably the best daily money can buy. It's an absolute sleeper. Typical BMW, warning lights, problems, you name it, it's got problems. Let's crack on then. We've dropped them off at Zen Performance now, who are going to sort those injectors out, and they're going to give me a ring when they're all sorted out. So until then, we're going to pop back home, sort everything else out, put the boost pipes on, new air filter, set the mass airflow up, then we'll come back, get the injectors, put them on, take it to get mapped. So that's the new airflow meter then, that's off a Z32, so that should meter a lot more air, we've still got to code that in and obviously put the pigtail on, which is what we're going to do now, because obviously it's got a six pin connector here, and this one here has got a three pin connector, but what we've got to do basically is cut this off here and solder these in, so here, this one is going to be the power, which is going to go here, this one's the ground, which I'm pretty sure is going to be this one here, and then that one there, I think if I can recall, is signal to this wire here. I think those two are joined because they're both ground, like ground for that, and ground for the airflow meter, and then that's the signal. And here's the effort that we're gonna be using. Basically, I just went on the KM website, put in a few dimensions, and uh, this came up, so let's let's unbox it then. There it is, as you can see, that is one long boy, so that's what I measured up that we could actually fit in there. So hopefully we can fit it in there now, because about 240 mil, something like that. But that should do what we want. You don't need a stupidly big air filter, but it just kind of takes the space and it looks cool, doesn't it? So there we go. That's pretty much it, roughly in, and it fits pretty nicely. It takes up all that free space there. It's probably not needed, but I like it. And then all this here, I'm going to just, you know, these are all nice and tight now, but I want to try and bring this a bit more out. So I'm just going to loosen the clamp off underneath here, try and twist this around. Then we'll get the boost pipes and all silicon on there. So then guys, we've got all of that in now. That was a bit of a pain to do, but this pipe here basically was part of the old J pipe that used to come across here that I've used. So basically rolled the end of it again, got some clamps on, squeezed it all around, cut that down a bit, popped that on, and kind of messed around a little bit and everything seems to fit up all right. Like even putting that in weren't too bad, just a bit of trial and error really. And then obviously that here is from when it was a J pipe, so I just left it there, ride that through there and all of this stuff under here. Then also putting this on, this actually fits in there really nice. It's literally perfect in there. 
just enough room to fit in there really so it takes up the space pretty nicely i'd say uh, but yeah hopefully now we can get some some more out of this so then guys that's all of that sort of stuff done and so far everything looks pretty sick and pretty happy with all of that but now we just got to go and get the injectors put them on set it all up in a base map and then take it to the rolling road get it dynoed hopefully get some good numbers out of it and i can't wait for that can't wait to take it for a blast when it's all done hopefully all of this will all be worth it so then guys now we've got the injectors back and we're going to put them in the car i just want to say a big thanks to rich zen performance who's flown these out to 750s so what we're going to do is put these back in the car then code them in along with the mass airflow and then check everything's all right and hopefully take it over tomorrow to get it all set up on a rolling road so guys i thought i'll quickly show you everything on the hand controller so you kind of know sort of how it works i don't really know 100 percent how it works but this is from my research what i've I've found to be the right way basically. So this monitor setting here is where you can monitor everything. So on here you've got all of these, like the main one I usually look at is timing and boost on channel two. And it will usually give you a chart or figures here when the car's running on what's happening. Anyway, so about coding the math and the injectors, just go down here into setting and then here airflow, select the right airflow, which we've done. So that's for the uh, Z32 math, which is correct. And you can scale in on percentages on it. I'll show you that. So I'll leave that as it is, because I don't know too much about that. That's just to kind of think load the, the voltage for the right mass airflow sensor. And if we go back here into injector, that's how you configure different injectors. So on here, what I've done, I've changed all of these to 49.5%. Um, basically, because they're reflowed injectors, so they're 750ccs. So it's a, as a fraction of the load of the 370s, which is standard. So you don't need to change this, which is for different brands of injectors, which is to do with the cores on the injector. But here, the difference is about 49.3%. So I've just rounded it up in percentage terms to 0.5%. So that should be fine for now until we take it to the rolling road. So that's all set up now. Um, on all of these, you've got to change each one. So that's pretty much all of that and how that works. Obviously, you've got all these other things on here and you can go through them to monitor and change things. I'm going to leave that as it is on the base map and get it over there. Fuck you know, this thing sounds like a fucking tractor. I think it's got a bit of an exhaust leak. That can't be good. So then guys, as you can probably hear, it sounds like a fucking Subaru. So basically I put um, something up on the form last night about what the fuck is this basically. And um, a couple of people have come back to me and said it could be the mass airflow sensor. So um, I tested all the wiring and that. The wiring's fine, but I think it's actually a fault with the airflow meter. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try a new airflow meter and I'm just going to cut the old pigtail off and put a new one on because I'd rather it be nice and fresh because I've got another one with it and this one's a bit worn out and knackered. So we're going to crack on with that and then hopefully we're going to fire this up and hopefully it sounds all right. So we also had a little bit of an exhaust leak on the car and at the time I was a bit frustrated and thought, fuck this, I'm just going to absolutely cover this thing in exhaust paste to kind of get rid of the issue because I think the gaskets on it is a bit too thin and then it pulls it in too close. So the studs, they kind of bottom out on the shoulder of it. So at a later day, I'm going to get a thicker gasket on here, um, put some washers on here if we have to and solve that another day. But for now, it's function over form because we've got a lot bigger issues and hopefully it's down to this airflow meter here so what we're going to do get rid of this nasty old pigtail uh put a new one on and the new airflow meter on i'm going to leave this filter off for now it's probably just going to be a lot easier because of the sort of room we've got to um just put the air filter that came on that mass airflow with it for now and if we don't use this we'll save it for someone else and we should hopefully solve all the issues we have right guys now i've got the new airflow meter on the car i've wired it in i've done all this again because i'm a bit of a perfectionist believe it or not even though you may think, what the fuck is that? I still care. Anyway, this should hopefully cure it. Um, we'll check that and then we'll set everything else up properly on the hand controller and double check everything. I've left this one here for now because this should do the job fine and I couldn't really get an adapter in time. So this will do and it should be fine for the setup we've got. So that's that. Let's get inside the car now and do everything. So now then guys, we've done all of that stuff. Basically what we've got to do is obviously because I, I don't really want to drive this thing how it is and it's got quite high knock readings on the car, engine lights and so what we're going to do is spoke to one of my mates and we're going to get it over on a trailer there basically. It's a lot safer to do it that way and I'd much rather do it that way than causing any sort of long term damage to the engine after all the work we've put into it. If it does go bang I suppose we rebuild it but for now I'd rather kind of 
make use of it as it is and try and get the best out of the car that we can. Um, but basically, I spoke to my mate. Um, he's, he works at a transport company and he's going to sort us out and we'll take it over there with him. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drive it up there off boost, basically, to avoid any damage. It's not too far. It's about a couple of miles. So fingers crossed, it'll be all right. And then we're going to get it over to MGT and Uneaton, leave it there. And then tomorrow morning, we'll go over in the morning and get everything hopefully sorted out fine there. today we took it to MGT Motorsport in Neaton and they've literally transformed this car it's not the quickest car in the world um, but to me it's unbelievable it's literally completely different to what it was before and I'm over the moon with it so I want to say a big thanks to MGT Motorsport thanks to Garth and Mark and Armit of course you know for sorting us out nothing but helpful along the whole way before I even took the car there gave me some great advice and they've just really done a great job on this and I'm over the moon with it to be honest so if you're looking for anywhere to go I'd highly recommend you go to MGT Motorsport if you're looking to get your car set up properly on a rolling road. So anyway, now I'm going to show you some figures from the rolling road. So then guys, here's a printout of the numbers we got. It's nothing too massive, but that's 355 wheel horsepower, which I think is around 410 brake horsepower. But you see here, the boost curve goes up here and it's all the way up here. So Garth was basically saying as well, the boost should come a lot lower down and then kind of hold a higher line, if that makes sense. So hold from up here, come on quicker and hold along that sort of level there. But anyway, the boost curve on there, it should be picking up a lot lower down, basically, according to Garth. He obviously knows what he's talking about on these. So what we're going to be doing next time, basically, is he's recommended me to check the actuator and the wastegate. And one of my mates also said to me to check the wastegate on that. So that's definitely something we're going to be looking at. It could not be closing properly or the actuator could be leaking a little bit, for example, before it's hitting that peak boost. So there are another couple of things that we're going to look at quickly next time and we're going to cover. And hopefully solving one of them should sort all of our issues in life out hopefully who knows but anyway we're going to do that and then we're obviously going to get some footage of driving this car um and show you guys what it's all about because to be honest on the way back with this car i didn't have any sort of things to mount the camera so i'm gonna to have to get some of them but i was so busy just enjoying it because it's literally like a new car now well not a new car but well it's pretty much it's pretty much a different car now so i was just so busy enjoying this car on the way back so i didn't manage to actually get any footage of it and i didn't have the mount so that's something we'll all be doing next time. We'll sort the little issues out and hopefully this thing should be an absolute blast to drive. And I've just honestly, I've loved driving this thing. Like it's, it's worlds apart guys. And I'll have to show you that because I'm literally in love with this car even more so than I was before now. But yeah, anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel and you want to see all that stuff, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next time.